Yes, I think it very much is a milestone um, having been listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange for 75 years. And I think if one looks forward and says what would create sustainability or durability into the future, it's probably a few things. And uh, the one would be uh, to continue to make decisions for the long term. Uh, I think today there's enormous pressure on companies uh, to deliver next quarter's results or next half year's results. And one has to always keep an eye on the future and make sure one's making decisions for the next 10 uh, or 20 years and balance that uh, with delivering short term profits. I think the second thing is there's enormous technological change um, in, in the environment we face today and one's business models and strategy have to continually uh, evolve to keep pace with those changes in technology uh, and also to keep pace with changes uh, in the external environment. So it's making sure that one's strategy is flexible and that one's business models are able to adapt and evolve over time to make sure that one's customer value proposition and services remain relevant to what the market demands. Yes, we set back in 2015, we set a bold goal over the next five years to double the group's revenue to 120 billion uh, plus by, by 2020. And I think if when, when one looks at how that's going to come about, uh, it's probably two broad areas. One is organic growth and the other is acquisitive growth. And I think while you correctly point out that uh, the mining sector uh, is now going into the fourth year of consecutive uh, decline in top line sales, we recognize it's a cyclical uh, industry. Um, and when the cycle turns, we'll be well placed from an organic growth perspective to capitalize uh, on the growth that ensues. I think the other area is acquisitive growth, uh, and there we'll be looking at making acquisitions uh, in adjacent markets, uh, but also into going into new geographies. For example, we've got a small presence in East and West Africa, which we can capitalize on. We've got a presence in Russia, and we've also got a presence in Europe uh, through Spain, Portugal, and the UK. And we'll be looking at potential acquisition opportunities in, in all of those areas. Unfortunately, resources don't locate themselves in places where it's necessarily convenient to do business. Uh, and if you look at the DRC, for example, uh, it has some of the richest copper and co cobalt reserves anywhere in the world. And if you look at Siberia, it has some of the richest uh, reserves in gold, nickel, diamonds and coal. Um, and so where those opportunities exist, we have to uh, follow those opportunities because that's where we're going to be selling Caterpillar equipment into mining companies operating in those territories. And I think what it takes to be successful there is firstly a pioneering mindset. Um, it all comes down to your people and they have to be people that are pioneers at heart and are willing to go into difficult uh, territories where it's not easy to do business. And I think that is part of the DNA uh, of, of Barlow World. I think also um, those people have to be willing to take on difficult challenges because those economies are often very volatile. Uh, both politically, um, but also in terms of exchange rate movements and, and boom and bust in, in commodity cycles. Uh, so you have to be flexible, you have to be resilient, uh, you've got to be willing to uh, do things differently, you've always got to have a, a plan B, and you've got to be willing to take a longer term view uh, and, uh, and work on through uh, difficult times or, or, or fluctuations in, in the business cycle to make sure uh, that you can capitalize uh, on the opportunities when uh, the cycle moves in, in your favor. I think in terms of the company's relationship with Caterpillar, what is particularly noteworthy is the fact that uh, the son of our founder, Punch Bala, uh, negotiated the dealership rights for South Africa uh, back in 1927. And Caterpillar itself was founded in 1925. So we've almost been a Caterpillar dealer as long as Caterpillar themselves uh, have been in existence. Uh, on top of that, we've managed to grow our Caterpillar dealer footprint very extensively over the years. So in 1927, we started with the dealership rights for only a portion of South Africa. And that extended then to the whole of South Africa, uh, Namibia and Botswana. In the 1990s, we expanded that into Zambia, Angola, Mozambique, Malawi. Um, in the um, um, early 90s, also into Spain and Portugal. In 1998, we started off with a, a small part of Russia, which expanded into a very extensive territory uh, throughout Russia. And then in 2007, the Katanga province uh, of the DRC. So I think what's also been unique is that that partnership has not only lasted a long time, but it's also expanded over time. 
And I think when I look back on it, it's, it's partly because um, not only have we done a good job for Caterpillar, uh, where we've represented their brand, but I think there's also been a common set of values that have underpinned the relationship. Because common values at the end of the day uh, build trust, uh, and trust means that even when you disagree on certain aspects, you're able to sit around a table and come to decisions that are ultimately in the mutual benefit of, of both organizations into the future. You know, at the end of the day, business operates in a particular socio-political context. Uh, and for businesses in South Africa to be successful for the longer term, we have to have one, political and social stability. And secondly, we have to have economic policies that are going to create an environment conducive to economic and business growth uh, over the long term. Uh, and if that uh, remains uh, important for business, then it's important for business to engage uh, on the issues of the day. Uh, and uh, for that reason, I do believe that it's important for business uh, to engage on socio and political institutions uh, um, in the country. And I think um, that's probably best done through formalized institutions like Business Leadership South Africa, where you can develop a coherent um, uh, voice and articulate um, a consistent uh, message uh, as part of a civil society uh, uh, grouping. And so that's what, in, this, in essence, we're trying to do. Bala will participate in, in various forums, including Business Leadership South Africa. And you would have seen in the press uh, uh, of late uh, some more direct uh, communication made by Business Leadership South Africa on some of the issues of the day.